And that is like the beauty of homeschool, is it not? And of, of doing unit studies, like they all pick out something different. And I'm always just kind of amazed. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Arispe Land. I am Chelsea. I'm a homeschooling mama to five kiddos. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about unit studies. Now, if you're, you not, are not new to my channel, then you know I talk a lot about homeschooling, and I have videos on how to, you know, homeschool for basically free, and how to do notebooking, and things like that. But notebooking and unit studies are a little different, so if you're interested in the notebooking video, definitely check that out. I'll have it linked at the end of this video. But unit studies are a very, very fun thing. We enjoy them very much in our homeschooling. That is like the core. That is like what we mainly do is unit studies. I like to make them myself, but you can go out and get them. So when we decide to do a unit study, we kind of all get together, me and my kiddos, and we'll either just discuss, or maybe we'll be looking through an encyclopedia to get ideas, and we'll find something that interests us. So it might be something scientific, it might be something historical, it might be something else, like maybe we read a really good poem and we want to do a unit study just on poetry, or maybe we learned about um, a really cool book series, and so we're going to pull things out of that book series and do a unit study just on all the different things inside of that book series. Now, I think I'll make a separate video talking about how to turn um, fictional novel type books into a unit study. That's very fun to do, but today I'm just going to keep it non-fiction and tell you how to do a unit study on a, a main topic. So, we have done many in the past. Uh, recently, or right now, we are doing an ocean theme unit study. And the way I go about this, like I said, we get together, we have a meeting, we pick something. So we chose Ocean Study because in our morning basket, we had an encyclopedia in there that was like a DK, I think it was Animal Encyclopedia. So we were just going through and reading, like we would just kind of randomly open and read about whatever page, you know, whatever page we landed on, we would read about that animal. And that was fun. Well, one day we opened it up to, I think it was Otter's, and the kids just loved that. So then they wanted to read more. We turned the page, it's dolphins. And they just were like, oh, we'll read more. Because it was like an animal encyclopedia. There was only so many pages on ocean creatures. So we read all that we could. And they were like, oh, you know, we want more books. Can we go to the library? And that's when, like when that light bulb kind of thing happens, when that excitement happens, that's when I'm like, yes, let's go to the library. Let's make this our new unit study. Because we weren't currently doing we are with the Little House on the Prairie books, but there's not a ton of science in that. And I thought this is perfect. It'll pair up with it perfectly. We have history over here and we have science over there. Although in our um, ocean studies, we do have history in this as well. So what we do when we do this is we go to the library and we just get a wide range of books. So we were doing ocean life. So maybe you're gonna do jungle life or animals from Africa or you're gonna do something like that. So I just went and I got a wide array of books, okay? I didn't just go get sharks or dolphins or whales. I got like all kinds of books about the ocean, all kinds of animals, all kinds of just facts about the ocean itself, the reefs, all that stuff. And then so we spent a week just in our morning basket and then in our like little unit study basket. I'm gonna show you guys all my stuff here in a minute. Um, we just went through those books and we would spend like, we would go through and read our morning basket and whatever really clicked that day, like one day we were reading about dolphins and whales and oh, something else. But anyway, dolphins and whales and the dolphins are what really, really clicked that day. So we spent the rest of the day doing dolphin stuff and I really, I was just winging it. I was like, okay, dolphins, let's go and get all the other dolphin books, read through those, let's watch documentaries. I Pinterest um, dolphin activities dolphin crafts, all that stuff, and that's just how we did it. The next day, we did the same thing. So that first week, we were just kind of getting our rhythm and letting things just fall into place. I'm very much like that because I feel like when you're schooling, if I'm forcing them, like I was like, I don't care if you want to learn about the dolphins. Today, we're learning about muscles. Sorry, kid. You know, so they're not going to want to learn as much. They're going to be like, oh, whatever. So I'm very much okay with kind of like flying by the seat of my pants and I realize that not everyone is like that. 
but you can do it in a very detailed way where you, you let them know, okay, this week it's just going to be about dolphins. And so you would spend the week before or the weekend before and you would get all your dolphin books, you would find all your dolphin documentaries, you would find all your dolphin projects, you would have everything you need, have it planned out and go from there. So you can do it very organized like. The first week I was really just winging it, whatever. Um, and I'm still doing that, but I am looking ahead. So I'm just looking at anything sea wise. So I'm looking at Pinterest for all the animals in the sea, you know, so I know like today sharks were the, were a big hit today. Everyone wanted to watch all the shark things and read all the shark things. So I already had in my Pinterest a shark category and I already have a bunch of art supplies for that. So it worked out really easy. So that is what we do. You know, we just go through the day and whatever strikes are fancy, that is what we do. But you can do it really organized. Now, our unit study, I try to get as much in it as I can. So, yes, it's science, right? But I'm also, we're doing history too, like, you know, the first explorers to explore the ocean. The first, you know, um, sorry, cat, always the cat. Um, the first people to discover the reefs. Um, the, you know, first... English Navy ships to go out and just all kinds of things like that. So it's history too. Um, and then we're also getting out of it writing. I found these really cool writing prompts from Dollar Tree. Now normally I would just make up writing prompts, no big deal. You can Google them, you can Pinterest them, whatever. But I found these at Dollar Tree and they just, they tell you information about the fish and then they ask you to write. And it sometimes it's four paragraphs, sometimes it's 200 words, it just depends. It's grades four through six. I also got one on sharks. So I just modify this. My two oldest are in six. They're about done, ready to go to seventh. And then I have a second grader and a almost first grader and a three-year-old. So three-year-old colors. But I just modify it. My two big girls just take them. I let them pick whatever they want out of here. Take them and go. They're good. My son can pick whichever one he wants. And then I help him a little bit. Um, he has trouble sometimes with his writing. And then my five-year-old likes to do it too, so I, I help her as much as I can. So we get writing in there, and then what I do is I also just turn this into like language arts and grammar. So after they're done writing, I will have them go through and like find different nouns and adjectives and adverbs and take their highlighters and, and do their grammar that way. So that way grammar is covered in there as well. So, so far we have science and history and writing and grammar. Um, and then we also have art because we go and find all the crafts, right? All the art things. They have free will sometimes, you know, do whatever you want for today. Or here's the crafts I found. Which one should we do? Um, they have a lot of fun with that. And then we're planning field trips. So there's the aquarium. Well, that's really the only field trip I have planned for that. So we incorporate the unit study. Like it's, our whole day revolves around that school-wise. And then we do have some read-alouds that aren't. But like I'll show you my morning basket I have shown my morning basket in a couple of videos so like in our morning basket we have this dolphins and sharks by the magic tree house it's a fact tracker so we'll just read a little bit out of this every day and this one I just put in here today it's monster fish so we haven't started this yet my morning basket I do in a looping schedule so I might get to this tomorrow, I might not, but it looks really interesting, and if it's not in here, I'll forget I have it. And then in my morning basket, I tried to keep it fun stories and not so much information. So we just have stories from the sea. Now this is a true story, but it's fun. Saving Fiona, and just this book, guys, has really cool pictures in it. So this is what we do in the morning. Our devotional is in here too. Her whole library turns into, like, you know, the coral reef underwater. Um, but I try to keep the morning basket light and fun. It gives everyone a chance to wake up. It draws my little ones in. It just is a nice, calm time. I'm not shoving facts at them or hoping they remember facts. So, you see, just fun. Now my books are going to be out of order. <laughs> fun books is what I try to do and then I of course have my devotional in here and I always keep like an atlas because that's just handy so that's our morning basket right now I just um, took out presidents we just finished up a president study um, we just read the last couple of books we were doing for our black history month so I just like redid this um, this week 
but we have been doing ocean. We did it all last week too. It just wasn't in the morning basket yet. It was just kind of fun on the side. And then in my school cabinet, which is over here, you can't really see it, but I'll show here. See, open that up and there's all the school stuff. All right, I keep just this handy dandy basket and in it, I have like, I got them this from the Dollar Tree. So they're having fun with this, learning how to draw different ocean animals. So what we do is like, we had already done dolphins by the time we got this book, but that, so that was the first thing they drew. And then I'm learning about sharks today, so they went and drew sharks. And it was just a fun little thing. And then we have just these puzzles. We have two more um, out and about somewhere. So they can play with those while I'm reading or just whatever. And then I'm just keeping other books that I own that I might want to use. And if I don't have them out, I'll forget about it. So we have an Usborn book. We have rabbits, my girls do. And sometimes the rabbits get the books. So this is not all like shark survival stories, but it has two in there. So we're gonna keep that. Just something I found at Goodwill and it is, you know, fictional, but a fun little read aloud. And then these Magic Treehouse books. This one's from the library, but. And then another one that was chewed up by my bunnies, but Island of the Blue Dolphins and Treasure Island. So those are just books that I own that I don't want to forget I have that we may or may not read, but I want them in there. I'm missing one. We're reading Call It Courage as our nighttime read aloud right now. I don't know where it is. Um, just to kind of go along with the ocean theme, usually our nighttime read aloud is a random book but I thought it would be good. It would go good. We had never read it before. So you can see I'm just, I have this like everywhere. I have more library books over on our little entry table too. Okay, and then this basket, I'm keeping some, yes, some of our um, nonfiction books. So what we do when we start our school time at the table is I put this big old thing down in the center of the table or like if we go out, we went out the other day to our picnic table, this went with us. We worked at the coffee table the other day, this one over there, so it's very handy. We worked in my room one day, they all spread a blanket on the floor and took this down there with them. So over here, like I said, I just have, I have a whole bunch more nonfiction books, but I just try to pick you know, random kind of covering everything so they can sit down and we can kind of decide what's going to be talked about today. And then we can go over to where I have the other books stored and dig deeper into that one animal. So like we might read this and come upon clownfish. So then we would go over there to the clownfish book and pull that out. So this is just, that's what that is. And then right here, I have all of my kids's I think I have all of them. They each have a folder is how we're doing it. Um, and we just put some notebook paper in here and then some printer paper in here. So they would just write like here, she wrote about dolphins. She has a list of vocab words. So as we're reading, we'll just say, oh, that's a good word. Let's choose that word. Or sometimes I'll have them pick a book and have them look through it and find a word that you don't understand. And that's gonna be your vocab word. Um, obviously, if they were picking ridiculously easy words, I would correct them, say, no, you need to fix that, but they don't, they've never done that. And then we always do like a, what I learned today, and it's always so interesting, because they're all hearing the same thing, all of them. They all seem to have different things they learned that day, and that is like the beauty of homeschool, is it not? And of, of doing unit studies, like they all pick out something different. And I'm always just kind of amazed at what, what, how they all do that, how they all get something different. And then we're, we do creative writing. So like this was before we got our writing prompts, we did this. But even with the writing pomp, prompts, that's asking them for a specific thing. And I want them to have fun and make up stories. So creative writing, I don't have them edit this. I don't edit it, I'll read it if they want me to. But the creative writing is their business, I edit. We edit, we do things with the writing prompts. They're in that basket, I don't know why I'm pointing over here. But creative writing, that's their thing. That's, that's not my thing. Um, and then just one day, I didn't ask her to two, but she wrote down shark facts in here. Um, looks like she started to write something. Junk or seaweed can be shelter for some fish. Um, and then we learned about walruses one day, so she wrote 
a little bit, drew a walrus. This was one of her writing prompts about sea turtles. So she, what she did was she made it a creative story and then also put the facts in there. So that was cool. Kept it from being boring and you can see she just went on and on and on. It's two pages long. Um, here was she had to do another writing prompt about sharks. And then in the back, we just have like artwork. So that's what, can't see what day it is. What day it is, which way it is. I'm tired. That's why this mom bun is here. It's, it's almost seven, but I feel like it's like 10. I'm tired. We diagrammed a shark one day. This was, she made a sea turtle cafe, right? So they would list what the sea turtles would really eat and all that stuff. So you can tell it's been a lot of fun. We've been having a lot of fun with it. And I have one for all my kids. Of course, they all look a little bit different because they put their own flair on it. How I'm keeping track of this, because I'm trying something new with keeping track of it. So I do have my ultimate homeschool planner and that's great. I feel like we're doing so much with this that I don't have enough room in that little box. So in that, I'm still keeping math and spelling and read alouds. I'm keeping read alouds that don't involve this. I'm keeping that tracked and then like other little things that my five and eight year old are doing to like work on their reading skills. I can, I'm keeping that in there. But then in here, I pin out. And this, I'm gonna have this printed out if I like the way it goes. But what I'm doing is I'm just writing the date and then I'm separating it out. So like, okay. So I have it in sections, ignore my handwriting, okay, okay. Of uh, books, movies and documentaries, assignments and crafts and art experiments. I have to tell you, this last week's been kind of weird and I have not been the best at keeping up with it and I hadn't fully decided if it was gonna be in there or in here, so it's kind of in both places. So I would just write down the books that we read, not picture books, other books. Um, movies or documentaries we watched, what I'm having them do, and what I'm having them draw or color or whatnot. So you can see we did a shark writing prompt, vocab words from Call It Courage, and we researched the history of the HMS Endeavor. Um, we didn't do any craft or art today, which is weird. And then you can see we read many books, and then we actually watched more documentaries in this. I just haven't written it all down. So that's that's what I'm doing and if I like it I'll print it up but that way I can file this away like when we're done and we take their little notebooks and put them away save them for a later day there's another book um I can put this in here too and just save a record of exactly what we did I'm finding paintings in here so we're watching some just like fun silly movies um, like I'm sure we'll watch Finding Nemo and all that. And then we're watching documentaries and some more seri serious stuff. I can't talk today. I found out where I put to call it courage. It's underneath my tripod. So we're also reading Call It Courage, Dark, uh, Dark Day in the Deep Sea. And I think that's it. So as you can tell, it's like a big part of our day. Um, I don't have it. I, I'm just not a big ahead of time planner. I am a fly by the seat of my pants. Not in a bad way. Not like I'm behind and don't know what I'm doing, but like I want to keep it fun and I want them to have fun and we just kind of choose what we want to learn about and go with it. It's almost like we sound like unschoolers when we're not unschoolers. I make sure they do their math and their writing and their reading and their spelling and all that stuff. Uh, I guess it's just more of a free schooling type thing. So what we want to learn about, let's go do that. So as you can see, it's covering most of the subjects. We're still doing some of our Prairie Primer but we are gonna kinda of take a little bit of a break because that's what we do. And just focus on this. I don't have a timeline on this. Um, maybe we'll get bored of it by the end of the week. Maybe we'll do it until summer. It doesn't really matter because it's not like you're ever done learning, right? So even if we did this for the rest of the school year, our school year's about to end, but the regular school year, um, it would be fine. We would just keep learning and keep researching and keep reading and writing and watching and listening and all that fun stuff. I would have to go out and uh, buy some more fun things. I also made sensory bins. I have a video on this. Um, so this is just water beads and ocean animals. And this is sand and seashells. So this is mostly for my little ones in mind, but my big kids have been playing in it. So 
That is how we're doing this ocean themed unit study. We just pick a topic. I find that having encyclopedias in your morning basket is very helpful for picking a topic. So we just pick a topic and then we go to the library and get all the books on it. Then we'll narrow, we narrow it down after that and, you know, fine tune it a little bit and say, okay, let's focus on this. Let's focus on that. Um, so we might spend one day on a dolphin or we might spend a week on a dolphin. One kid might choose to spend longer on one animal than the rest of us. We might keep reading other books, but when they go to do their assignments, they keep going back to this one animal and all of that is fine. But that is how we do a unit study over a certain topic. Now I can go, I'm going to do another video on how to take, like, I'm just going to pick, you know, this, how to make a unit study out of it. I'm actually working right now on making our own unit study for a chapter book that we love. So it's very doable and I will do a video on that, but that is how we do a unit study just on a, you know, a big topic. So we'll just continue doing this until we burn out on it. That's what we're going to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I realize I kind of rambled. I'm going to blame it on being tired and the fact that I like books. So I hope you guys liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Make sure and subscribe if you have not. I've almost reached 300 and I'm super excited about it. I know that's small and silly, but it makes me happy. So anyway, subscribe if you haven't. Leave any questions or comments down in the comments. I love chatting with you guys down there. It's so fun. And uh, we will see you guys next time with another video. Bye.